Hey everyone, National Master Sean Lee here today. Today, my opponent played the very weird 1h5 in response to my move 1e4. Now what do you do when your opponent plays a weird move? I'll be showing you what to do in today's chess video. Let's get straight into it. Alright, let's play a game against this 1400 rated player. Let's play e4, let's see what our opponent plays here h5 all right that's an interesting opening interesting choice now pawn over here now what i like to do here i like to just play h3 just say no problem you know you can play this h5 h4 shenanigans you're just not going to get into my position very much that's what i like to do against this type of thing a lot of people like to ignore it too much or you know not ignore it at all which becomes a problem but this is like a perfect time to actually play h3 it's not using too many moves to stop this h3 move idea, but it's not too, using too little as well. Alright, so what do I, what am I going to do now? Well, for the rest of this game, I'm just going to try to take advantage of this weakness over here. Let's play bishop over here. Let's threaten to take this pawn on f5. If he takes me, I will take back with a bishop, and as you guys can see, the light square weaknesses of my opponent are extremely, extremely, extremely weak. Hmm. Our opponent gives us the pawn. We will gladly take it. Not because it's a good pawn to capture it's because well it is a good pawn to capture because of our opponent's very weak light squares here let's play bishop here let's just threaten to take over here as well we're just taking everything bit by bit while not compromising our own position whatsoever all right let's see what our opponent does our plan is very simple we're just going to try to make a good position with our pieces now this move over here, we shall just take this pawn. If he decides to take our bishop, we just capture back with our queen. And life is good. This is a very bad bishop over here. It's not doing anything, nor will it ever do anything. So we're not really too worried about that. Now, he invested two moves to take my bishop. Was that bishop an important one? Definitely, yes. However, I got a lot of things in return. So, in this position, I'm probably just going to decide to castle on the queen's side. Just make it safe over here. Our opponent is attacking this guy over here. We can play G. We can take here and then play G4. But then our opponent has double bishops. Do we want that? Probably don't want to give our opponent that for free. So probably not the best idea. Well, then what else can we do? We can play G4, but we need to be scared of some ideas in which they can play Knight G4 because my rook is hanging and this pin is st technically still a thing. But I think G4 right now is possible. I don't think there's anything wrong with it at the moment. Maybe G5 by our opponent. G4, our opponent has this interesting G5 move with the idea, eh, I don't think it works, let's just play G4. We need to be wary here, we cannot move this bishop. Why can't we move this bishop? Because if we move the bishop, knight takes G4 is a very threatening idea here that we do not want to uh, get involved with. Alright, so since the knight moved now, we're not too worried about that anymore. Question is, where do I want my bishop? I probably want it on this diagonal because this diagonal is very important. I'm also stopping the bishop from coming here. But the question is, do I want it here though in g3 where it's safer? And so my knight can go to g5 to go here. Actually, now that I think about it, this looks better. Just with the idea of playing knight here, knight there. You can play knight here, but that doesn't do anything. We just move our queen away. Though we might want to play c3, just make sure all our bases are covered. How's our opponent going to develop his bishop? That's the real question. Alright, so obviously as you guys can tell, his idea is the same idea I was talking about earlier. He's just trying to play the little um, cheapo over here. Now the question is, what do we do? We don't want to repeat moves, and we can't move the rook away because otherwise they can take here. Though that might not even be too bad. But let's just play rook h2, you know, just get, you know, just say, you know, no problem for me. I'm defending my rook, I'm also defending this g4 idea. No need to think too much about this. We're up two pawns, and two pawns are very easy for us to win in the end game, so we're just going to try to win in the end game. What is the only way we lose if our king's safety or some silly shenanigans over here happens? So we'll make sure that does not happen. All right, let's play over here. What the idea of playing knight over here? Sure, does it look good? Looks pretty good. I need to make sure there's no silly stuff that can happen to my king. Doesn't look like it, so we're just going to plop a knight on e6. Ooh, our opponent sacrifices here. Not sure what his idea is. Perhaps he thought because the knight moved away, I'm no longer defending this. But I don't think he realized that, no, I still am. Alright, let's plop the knight on e6. This is called an outpost. It's a super amazing outpost because it's super hard for our opponent to get rid of. Now, 
uh, now that I said it, you know, I realize you could do this as well, but that's fine. We'll just trade off more pieces, and again, this is favorable for us. The more pieces traded off, the better. Especially since we're up a piece now. Would you like to trade queens, mister? We really need to get these pieces developed as well. Alright, he said yes. The yes to the exchange. Now let's just, you know, let's just solidify the position here. Make sure you can do nothing. Maybe f4 was better, but that's fine. Alright, let's play knight here. He's going to play bishop g7, obviously. Let's just play, like, king here or something. Yeah, let's just play king here. I'm not castling because this is the end game. In the end game, you don't need the king to be safe. You want the king to be active in the center. You want it to be useful. You don't want it to be like this guy over here. This is a sad excuse for a king. In the end game, the king leads the army, not carries behind. Alright, where's the wreck going? Cannot go here, cannot go here, cannot go there, it can only go here. And that's not a problem for me, so I don't care. Let's play rook b1 so we can move the knight. Oh, well, he moves here anyways, I suppose we should just take it. We'll move our knight, and we won the game. Very nice. Alright, that h5 move was a little bit interesting, so it is what it is. So as you guys can see, after h5, you can tell that this is a very weird opening, not an opening you guys usually see in your you know daily lives. So what do I what I did do? I didn't overreact and I didn't underreact. That's something very important to know. When he decided to keep going, I decided to stop it. And if you stop his opponent's plans, well now this move is just silly. I then think to myself, okay, how do I take advantage of my opponent's mistake? I realize this is overextended. Overextended pieces are meant to be taken advantage of, and you can see the rest of my game was just trying to take advantage of that. Bishop h4 with the idea of taking the pawn, I'm up two pawns, and from then on, I just dealt with my opponent's threats. This is a very important threat to make sure you don't fall for. And after that, I just played rook h2 and just slowly converted by putting my pieces on better squares. And traded it off. Let me counterplay, exchange off pieces, win the game. Alright, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, all I'm asking you guys to do is press that like and subscribe button. That'd be helpful for our channel. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!